Why focus on food and proteins specifically? Why is that? Um, I mean, I, I definitely uh, would not frame it in anything that sounds like a silver bullet. So it's not like this is going to make the difference, uh, but it will make a big difference. So like, you know, it's not gonna, uh, one of the things Sam said was, uh, there are lots of reasons we're uh, struggling to hit 1.5 uh, Paris Climate Agreement. Um, and that's true. Um, and if we make this transition, there are still lots of other things that have to happen. Um, but uh, I do think it is true that if alternative proteins do not succeed, um, we will have 60 to more than 100% more meat produced in 2050. Uh, most of the predictions are roughly double by 2050 relative to today. Um, right now, um, animal agriculture is responsible for about a fifth of direct climate change and uses 3 billion hectares of land. Um, so according to Nature Sustainability, some um, ag economists out of NYU, environmental economists out of NYU, that's 26 gigatons um, of carbon sequestration potential. Um, if we double that, through 2050, uh, the biodiversity implications are grave. The direct emissions implications are grave. The amount of additional anti-medically relevant antimicrobial drugs that are gonna be required um, and the doubling of pandemic risk when animal agriculture is already linked to six of the seven most likely causes and is altogether two of them. Um, so alternative proteins literally eliminate uh, what the UN Environment Program and the International Livestock Research Institute and CJIAR um, listed as one and two of the seven most likely causes of the next pandemic. So we double both of those. Um, it's a lot of harm from our current system now and looking at doubling it through 2050 and the two things that are being considered to try to mitigate this are convince people to eat less meat and alternative proteins. Um, alternative proteins feels, we should do both, but alternative proteins feels more trackable. Um, so I, I think it's you know, vastly under-resourced relative to the um, promise that it holds. So what kind of opportunities are out there for the private sector to innovate and make an impact? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, um, one really promising aspect of alternative proteins as a solution, um, is that we have multiple potential roadmaps. So we can look at what has worked for renewable energy. So the Interna uh, International Energy Agency, um, says that solar is the basically the hope of renewables. It's the most promising um, renewable energy for getting us to a renewable energy future. Um, we can look at the sorts of private sector in innovations and public-private partnerships that have been dispositively responsible for getting solar to where it is now from where it was 10 or 15 years ago. Um, we can also look at the trajectory of electric vehicles, um, which again has been significant private sector activity um, bolstered by government support. Um, we have most of the governments of the world committed to the Paris Climate Agreement. Um, the argument that the Paris Climate Agreement requires animal agriculture to go down um, appears to be scientific consensus at this point. It also requires naturally occurring sequestration. Um, alternative proteins allow for both of those things to happen. Um, so figuring out a way to um, both A, governments to create um, fund science that lifts the entire field, so governments to fund science that can help uh, the entire sector, um, and then B, uh, governments to support research and development, um, and governments to support infrastructure and manufacturing build out, uh, the same sorts of government incentives and, and government science that has been instrumental in the success of, of renewable energy and electric vehicles. 
um, can and should be applied to the endeavor of, of creating meat from plants and cultivating meat from cells. About those successes, what successes are you seeing lately? What motivates you lately and encourages you to keep going? Um, I am super encouraged by the degree to which the environmental community um, is beginning to recognize the importance of alternative proteins um, as a key part of mitigating um, climate change and biodiversity loss from animal agriculture. Um, I'm also extremely encouraged by the movement from industry um, and that, so on the one hand we have you know, the U.S. government, the Biden administration, their executive order on the bioeconomy, their national strategy on advanced manufacturing, um, both of which um, are saying, hey, look, um, right now the United States is leading on alternative protein entrepreneurship. Uh, we should lean in on this and seize this sector. Um, and then we're seeing that as a very bipartisan um, endeavor. So our first piece of standalone uh, legislation had both three Republicans and three Democrats supporting it. Uh, Donald Trump's Secretary of Agriculture, Sonny Perdue, Donald Trump's um, FDA Commissioner, Scott Gottlieb, uh, were both supportive of alternative proteins, which I think is extremely encouraging. Um, and then you look at uh, companies, largest meat companies in the world, JBS, Tyson, Cargill, uh, largest food companies in the world, ADM, Nestle, Unilever. Um, all of them are saying, hey, if we can make meat from plants and cultivate meat from cells, that will be a more efficient way um, of meeting this consumer need, uh, consumer desire for meat. Uh, so the fact that incumbent industry is seeing this as an opportunity, um, also, I think, uh, incredibly um, hopeful and encouraging. Shift in mindset as possible. Exactly. Uh, people always want to know, you know, what can we do to help? Um, what can we do and what next steps are needed to make this happen? Um, I mean, uh, uh, definitely political activity. Um, I mean, I, I, so GFI, GFI, I mean, GFI's website, GFI.org, um, is really a Wikipedia of alternative proteins. and. Um, your the answer to your question is going to be different uh, based on where somebody is in their career trajectory as well as what somebody's skill set is. Um, but if you go to gfi.org slash community, um, that's a great place for scientists and entrepreneurs and investors. Um, but gfi.org slash newsletters um, will allow people to sign up for our policy newsletter or our entrepreneurial newsletter um, or our sort of straight this is what's happened over the last two weeks in Alternative Proteins newsletter. You can also get our monthly reports there. So um, I guess the last thing to say is GFI is a nonprofit organization, but we're actually six nonprofit organizations. So there's GFI in the US, as well as our affiliate organizations in India, Israel, Brazil, and Asia Pacific, Asia Pacific and Europe. Um, and uh, as a nonprofit organization, uh, we are 100% powered by philanthropy. Uh, so if somebody's looking for a, a high impact uh, philanthropic opportunity. Um, I think we have you covered. Awesome. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Chris. Thanks, Nikki. <laughs>